It's not that easy being green. Having to spend each day the color of the leaves. When I think it could be nicer being red or yellow or gold or something much more colorful like that. It's not that easy being green. It seems you blend in with so many other ordinary things. And people tend to pass you over because you're not standing out like flashy sparkles in the water or stars in the sky. Trying to understand color balance it's very sad, very, very sad. It doesn't come very quickly, and it's not very intuitive. Learning color balance takes a long, long time. It's a step-by-step -step process, learning and training your eye how to observe color. But there's a few tips that I could give you that'll help you look for the color and try and determine if the color in an image is just wrong. One of the things that you have to understand about color is when you view color, there's three participants in the viewing of that color. The first one is light. There isn't any color without light. So you have to consider what kind of light is being viewed. Is it sunlight? Is it artificial light? Is it cloudy? Is it bright? The light affects the look of the color. The second thing is the object itself. And so that's the number two participant within this triangle. And the third element is the observer. Now the observer could be a person. It could be a camera. It could be a sensor and all of those things are different variables within one color event. And any one of those moves a little bit. If the light changes, if a cloud comes in, if the object moves, if the observer becomes different, then the observation of the color will be different. You know, learning color balance is like learning how to ride a bike. You learn the process, you understand how it works, and you don't forget it. Another thing is that when you look at color, there are opposing dualities within a color system. And actually, they're part of the color wheel. They're called complementary colors. So when you look at green, and green starts to move away from being green in an opposing system, magenta is the color that creeps in. And the less magenta you have, the opposite color on the color wheel, the more green you're going to have. So on a continuum from magenta to green, there, these two colors are in a sort of antagonistic relationship. So I'm sitting there on the lawn and I'm watching all these trucks and diggers just drive right on by. And I'm thinking, couldn't one of them stop and turn me into a princess? One thing to keep in mind is that there are important colors that the human mind is used to understanding. And these are the colors that, if they're off, the picture itself will look very wrong. Um, an example would be skin tone. If the skin tone is wrong, the mind remembers that. And then it, the picture doesn't feel right. There's also colors that would be called memory colors. 
And those are colors that dominate the mind, such as green grass, blue sky, and skin tone. And so those colors are in the memory of your viewer, and you have to get those colors right. It comes trouble. Now, an important thing is that if you actually look at color and think about it in terms of neutrals and midtones, then I just kept talking. Mm -hmm. And they kept driving. Keep going. Okay. Take four, because this will be a cut. One of the most important things that I could tell you is that when you color balance an image, you really need to think about what, um, what you're looking at. And within the picture, it doesn't help to look at a highlight or a shadow area to try and color balance. What I mean by that is if you look at a highlight area, that's the bright area of the picture, the color can actually not be that evident because the part of the picture is so bright that the color that's wrong is not emphasized. When you look at a shadow area of a picture, it's so dark that the color may be hidden within the darkness of that shadow. So ultimately, and this is something you really have to keep in mind, is that when color balancing, you need to look at the midtones of your picture. That means not a shadow or highlight, but the middle ground of your picture to look for what color might be hiding out. If you're lucky enough to have gray or skin tone in your picture, that's exactly where you want to look for the wrong color. Those are, that's color information that you know, and you'll be able to detect if there's any color that's hiding out. One more tip that I'd like to give you in the difficult task of color balance is that color often can hide out in its own color. So in other words, green can hide out in green and you won't realize it. So what you have to do is say, does the picture look too green? If you don't have a neutral, you're gonna have a very hard time figuring that out. But like colors often hide out within themselves. And to tell you the truth, it's not easy being green and seeing green. It's very sad. Well, there I was trying to explain color balance to my students when I realized, you know, I could give them basic tips, but after that, all there is is practice, practice, practice. That's the only way you're gonna really get it is just work with it, work with the tips I gave, and spend time and practice. 